Afternoon. Oh, my pleasure entirely. As a very wise man once said, give me my golf clubs, fresh air, and a beautiful partner. And you can forget about the golf clubs and the fresh air. <laughs> Stop it. I was hopeless, wasn't I? Well, for your first game, you did okay. Well, I'm sorry I wasted so much time hitting the ball into the rough. I saw you keep looking at your watch. That wasn't my watch. It was a compass. <laughs> I was bad, but I wasn't that bad. You were fantastic. Oh. And you do have the most gorgeous swing. Oh, <laughs> Rob. Hey, those two in there, all over each other like an outbreak of measles. What are you talking about? A pair of feather-brained lovebirds, twittering tweet nothings into each other's lug holes. Are you talking about Rob Mitchell and Mum? <laughs> Soon to be Mrs. Mitchell at this rate. The way they're carrying on, you better start sorting out the flowers for the church. You're crazy in the head, you know that. Oh, it may start off as an innocent round of golf, but before you know it, they'll be announcing the engagement, and then it's ding dong, the bells are gonna chime. And before you've had time to shake off the confetti, there'll be a new little ankle biter in the family. Number one, Mom is not getting married. Number two, I will not be getting a new baby brother or sister. And number three, Stop spreading stupid rumours and gossip about my mother. Oh, yeah? Well, there's no smoke without fire, and believe me, that pair is smouldering. <laughs> <laughs> so about these golf lessons. <laughs> well, so you really mean it, then? Of course I really mean it. I propose we strike while the, um, five iron's hot <laughs> and start next week. Oh, oh, I'm not sure. Well, I am. Look, I, I hope you'll think seriously about my proposal. I could give you a ring tomorrow, and we can set a date. <laughs> proposal, ring, set a date. Aha, Mistress Ella, there you are. Come, come, the jollifications and hijinks are in full swing. Oh, I'm not in the mood for a party, thanks, Squiffy. Pish and piffle. It is young Tristan's 1500th birthday bash. He needs all the help he can get blowing out his candles. Oh, all right then. Splendiferous pip pip and tickety <laughs> boo. <laughs> Spirits tonight, Lily but Lovey. <laughs> Let's get off down and boogie. What's it to be, darling? Your pyramid or mine? Happy birthday, Tristan. Miss Ella, hi. Take five, buddy. Catch you later. I saw a face that long was when Merlin got his beard caught in the mangle. I'm sorry to be such a party pooper. I'm feeling a bit down. Anything I can do? It's Mum. You'll never guess what she's gone and done. You know that Rob Mitchell that took off to play golf? Well, Tristan Shell, you old dog. Buffalo Bess. Forgot to invite me to your little birthday bean feast, did you? Uh, no. Yes. I mean, you didn't get me invite then. I guess you never sent no invite, you low-down crock of coyote spittle. Maybe you didn't want a little old Bessie fancy clam bake. As if. Ah, you know you're always really welcome, Bess. Well, now, that was just what I was hoping to hear. Let you and me get out there on that dance floor and cut a rug. Oh, well, actually, I... Excuse me, ma'am. I got me a hankering for a hoedown. And I hear the birthday boy here is pretty neat on his feet. If you don't mind... Yeah, hey, oh. come on, boy, let's go. Hey. Ah. 
needs to be done. Hold about. Hang your horses. If the party's over, what are you still doing here? Well, I'll tell you straight, McNugger. I kind of like it here. You guys have come up trumps, got yourselves a snug little number. Me, I'm a bit of a drifter. Talked of old tumbleweed blowing wherever the wind takes me. But maybe it's time for old Buffalo Bass to settle herself down. Madam, you don't mean... I surely do, Squiffington. Fellas, you got yourselves a new roommate. Oh, oh. She's planning to get married without telling me. He asked her to consider his proposal. He said he'd give her a ring, then they'd set a date. That don't necessarily mean nothing. I just told you what I heard. Uh, we don't always hear what we thunk we hear. Thunk? Exactly. I can't count the number of times that I listened to someone and got the wrong end of the stick. You think I'm mistaken? He could have been proposing anything. When he said he'd give her a ring, maybe what he meant was he was going to phone her. Yes, yes. And setting a date doesn't have to mean for a wedding. You got it. <laughs> oh, I've been so stupid. Tristan, you're a genius. Everyone else reckons I'm as thick as a plate of school custard. But I have me uses. Tristan! <laughs> What beautiful blooms! <laughs> Meadows trim with daisies pied, shallow brooks and rivers wide. <laughs> Are you familiar with Milton's Allegro? I didn't even know he could drive. Oh, <laughs> very good. <laughs> I shall make a note of that. I'll slip it in when the sermon's flagging. Should elicit a bit of a titter, eh? <laughs> so what can I do for you, Donald? Uh, one word. Builders. Builders? As you know, the church is planning extensive refurbishments. We need a reliable team on the job. I know you had a mountain of work done here when you started up, so I was wondering, can you recommend anyone? I know the very person, Hopalong Hughes. Hughes? He did all this wonderful work. Oh, look at this fabulous reception area. Well, that's splendid. So this Hopalong Hughes will be the best man. Best man? Absolutely. Excellent. Well, I must dash. I have to prepare for my over-sixties Caribbean lunch and limbo session. <laughs> Bye now. Bye. So it's true, then? Yes, it's true. Superman's secret identity is none other than mild-mannered reporter Clark Kent. You know what I mean. Is what true? What are we talking about? And why are you being so shirty? It's pathetic. You just can't bring yourself to tell me, can you? Tell you what? Forget it. I'll find out all the details that's announced in the local paper. Well, I guess that's cleared that one up, then. Listen up, lady. There's only so far you can push us. Is that right? You betcha that's right. No way are we gonna count out an old cowpoke in pigtails. Says who? Says him. Got a problem with me being here, boy? Me? No. Stay as long as you like, Bess. We love having you here. And do you love having me here, Squiffy? <laughs> Indubitably, madam. Your presence is a veritable soup spot of ambrosia. Uh, fragrant, uh, soporific, and uh, congenial to the eye. Uh, uh, uh. Heck, I have no idea what you're jabbering about. But it sure sounds pretty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I reckon I'm gonna like living here with you boys. Make a gal feel real welcome. <laughs> well, I guess I'll just mosey along and introduce myself to the lady there. You pair of damp Nellies, frightened of a woman. Oh, well, if you're so big and butch, I mean, you go and tell her to leave. Me? Well, I, 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 uh... What are we worrying about? This is Annie's hotel. Annie won't let us stay. As soon as Annie see what a pain she is, Miss Buffalo Bess will be out on her wild frontier. 
<laughs> so I put down my plate of beans and says, now I know why they call it the Windy City. <laughs> oh, that is hilarious. It's going to be really good fun having you here. You know, sometimes I need another woman to talk to. Well, now you got me, Annie. It's Annie's hotel. Annie won't let her stay. Any more scintillating ideas, Professor? So tell me about yourself, Bess. Where were you born? What were your folks like? Oh, tell me about your mother. Mama! Mama! Oh, my mother! You all right? <laughs> of course I'm all right. I'm Buffalo Bess, tough as nails and twice as sharp. That's me. Oh, <laughs> so you were going to tell me about oh, your mother. Shucks, at the time. You know, I'd love to stay and chew the fat, but I got me some chores to do. Catch you later, Miss Annie. You gotta do something and quick. That woman has to go. That's no woman. It's Beelzebub in buckskin. What is the matter with you lot? Ah, oh, she's what's the matter with us lot. Tell her to pack her bags and sling her up. I'll do no such thing. I like Bess. She's lively and she's funny. And she's staying. <laughs> Tristan! Oh! Oh! Miss Ella, glad I was able to be of help when you're fretting over your mom getting hitched. Yes, thank you so much for that. What were those wonderful words of wisdom? We don't always hear what we thunk we hear. Hey, there's no need to thunk me again. I wasn't going to. You got everything wrong, as usual. Mum is getting married. I don't believe it. Believe it. I heard her talking to the vicar about the best man. Or maybe you thunk I heard that wrong as well. What do you reckon she'd like for a wedding present? <laughs> there you are. OK, down to business. I've got this cunning little plan that hinges on getting Annie to chuck Bess out. But Annie thinks she's the cat's pyjamas. Yeah, but not for long, my son, not for long. Now, let me ask you a question. What's the one thing in the world Annie loves above everything else? Hmm. Oh, her daughter. Yeah, well, obviously her daughter, but there's something else. A car. Yes, apart from her daughter and a car. Well, there's that gold bracelet. Her ballet shoe, autographed by Darcy Bustle. Yes, yes, well, apart from her daughter and a car and a ballet shoe, autographed by Darcy Bustle. I know, I know, that beautiful black silk Raimondo Bambini evening gown. <laughs> yeah. Apart from a daughter and a car and a gold bracelet and a ballet she ordered off by Darcy Bustle and the beautiful black silk Ramon and Bambini evening gown, for Pete's sake, what else does she love? Oh, a fiancé. Oh, it's bodkin to get you what fiancé? Miss Ella told me Annie's marrying that guy with the golf clubs. No, never. Shut up, shut up, shut up. I'm not talking about no fiancé. I'm talking about the flaming hotel. Oh. oh. She's nuts about the place, ain't she? If anyone was to touch a stick of her precious furniture, she'd have a nervous bread bag. And if that person should happen to be one, Buffalo Bess. McNugget, you are a devious, a rogue. And I thank the stars for it. My friends, I believe our troubles are over. <laughs> <laughs> Just run that one by me again, can you? My pleasure, my dear. Annie's out playing golf. But she told us to tell you that you was in charge while she was away. Well, that's mighty decent of her. And being that you two are such big buddies and she wants you to feel comfortable here, she thought you might like to bring in a few of your own bits and bobs. Change the place around a bit. Make it a real home from home. Golly, gee, I'm real touched. Can't say I'd miss some of this namby-pamby clutter. Then it's gone. Oh, bravo, Mistress Bess. Already a veritable improvement. <laughs> yes, sirree. When I finish here, you boys won't even recognize the old place. <laughs> what? Howdy, Miss Annie. What do you reckon? No, 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 no. I, I, I'm dreaming. I do I don't believe this. I've walked into the wrong hotel. Here we go, lads. Fun's about to begin. <laughs> this isn't happening. Hey, what have you done to my lovely reception? Calm down, Annie. It's OK. OK? OK? I'm up to my ankles in sawdust. Eyeball to eyeball. 
ball with a, a moth-eaten buffalo head. Even on a bad day, that is not okay. Better start packing your bags, Ben. I just made a few little home improvements. Oh, have you? Why don't we just call ourselves the Lucky Nugget Saloon and have done with it? That's what I was looking Two hours ago, there were vases full of beautiful flowers. And now there's been spittoons full of... Oh. Bye-bye, Ben. Nasty knowing you. Don't come again. <laughs> Look, excuse me, may, may I just say something? Look, I, I, I know it's got nothing to do with me, but um, speaking as uh, an interior designer, I just have to say that what you've done here is amazing. What? Cowboy chic. It's the very latest thing. Ranch house retro. The romance of the range, the allure, the ambiance, the authenticity of the great American Wild West. Are you saying you like it? Like it? I love it. Annie, yeah. can't you see just how fresh and exciting all this is? Well... Uh... Simple, stylish, hey... Stunning. I see. Well, now you've explained it, I... I suppose... It's marvellous. Well done. She, she can't, can't be serious. serious. Only here five minutes and already she's coming up with wonderful ideas for the hotel. Bess, hang up your steps and take the weight off your saddlebags. Stay as long as you like. Hot dog. Yourself a glass of milk, then. Wow, Scotland Yard really missed out when you joined the Royal Ballet. Yeah, don't be like that. You've been snapping away at me all day. What have I done? And still, you don't have the guts to tell me. Do I tell you what? I'm going to bed. Fine. Oh, by the way, what do you think? How can you be so heartless? Ella? We've come to a decision. What? It's either her or us. She goes or we go. Adios, amigo. How many more times I like Bess? She's chatty and she's cheerful and she's out there. Flirting with your boyfriend. What? Calm down. I expect she's just being chatty and cheerful. Of course, that's it. Although I must say, for a guy and a ghoul, they did seem more than just good friends. Bess! <laughs> Hi, I was just getting a lasso lesson, and who better than from a lass who's a bit of an expert, eh? Rob, I think you'd better leave. What? Bess and I need to talk. Huh? Right. Um, I'll phone you tomorrow then. Good night, Rob. Um, <sighs> bye then. <laughs> Fine looking fella, just my type. Now, I've been thinking things over, and you know, I may have been a tad hasty inviting you to stay. You asking me to leave, Annie? I think it would be for the best. Oh, you do, huh? Yeah, well, things don't seem to be working out. Well, they're working out okay for me. That's why I'm telling you, just like I told them other mutton heads, I ain't going nowhere. Now, please, please be reasonable. <laughs> of course, if you ain't happy squatting here with me, there is another way out. Excuse me. And that's the door marked exit. Are you telling me to leave my own hotel? See, I'm getting to like it here more and more, and with me as manager, this place could become a little gold mine. What do you reckon? I reckon they were right all along. You're nothing but a, a malevolent, manipulative megalomaniac. Oh, words, words, words. Look, you ain't got nothing better to do than stand there spotting like a dictionary. You give me a hand with this. <laughs> what do you reckon? Thought it would look swell over the front door. Mom! Oh, Ella. Oh! Oh, my back. I feel like Quasimodo's kid sister. Oh. What are you doing sleeping here? Bess threw me out of my room. I had nowhere else to go. That's terrible. Well, don't you worry about me. You get yourself off to school. I'll sort something out. <sighs> Mom, this probably isn't the right time, but I have to know. Why won't you talk to me?
asking me about you and Rob. Rob? It's not that I don't like him. He's really nice, but I do have the right to know if you're planning to marry him. Marry him? Are you crazy? What on earth gave you that idea? I heard you talking to the vicar about having Hopalong as best man. <laughs> yes, as best man to do the repairs on the church. Oh, so there is no wedding? <laughs> of course there isn't. Then what about the baby? B oh, I don't believe this. I saw you knitting the little booties. You showed them to me. There, I was right. I'm afraid not. These aren't baby socks. They're covers to go on the end of Rob's golf clubs. What? You don't really think I'd get married or have a baby without telling you, do you? I've been so worried. <laughs> and so angry. number of times you bit my head off, I was thinking of having you committed to Jurassic Park. Mom, I'm sorry. Oh, come here. Ella Mendelssohn, what am I going to do with you, hmm? More to the point. What are we going to do with her out there? Right. It is time to get tough. It is time to stand shoulder to shoulder. United, we shall drive this, this bloodsucker out of my hotel. Fighting words, madam. But we have about as much chance of success as Pingu has of reading the news at ten. Oh, he's right. Bess isn't scared of us. She isn't scared of anyone. There must be somebody. Well, we're not going to let her beat us. My mother used to say you should stand up to bullies. My mother always used to tell me... Kneecaps? Mother. Mother! Are you OK? Hmm. Oh, tell me about your mother. <laughs> That's it. I'll be back, I promise. Mum's a word. Your bill, ladies. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed your stay at the Lucky Nugget. Come again. Where's Kneecaps? He's been gone for hours. Tis high noon, madam. I fear the chicken-hearted poltroon has done a bunk. The moment. You have outstayed your welcome. That's so. You're not wanted here. <laughs> you telling me I'm gonna be thrown out? That's what I'm telling you. And which one of these lily-livered, yellow-bellied prairie rats is going to have the guts to make me go? You... Oh, it's Bodkins. No, 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 not me. You... 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 <laughs> so who exactly is going to make me leave? I reckon that's going to have to be me. Whoa. What are you doing here? More to the point. What are you doing here? Driving your poor old mother even further into her grave, that's what. I ought to put you over my knee, Vesselina. Vesselina? <laughs> You're only 147. That ain't too old for a spanking. But, Ma! But me no buts. You told me you was going to a friend's birthday party. Promise you'd be home by 10.30. That was two days ago. Oh, Ma, listen. If I had a nickel for every night I spent up on Boot Hill waiting for you to come home, I'd be sleeping in a gold-plated coffin. Now, you're coming home right now, and you are grounded for the next 20 years. No! Sorry, folks, for all the fuss and trouble. Kids, what can you do? Okay, girl. Get move. So long, folks. Bye bye, Bess Selina. And remember, Papa knows best. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'll be the envy of every um, guy in the locker room. Of course, I used to play around at golf myself. You play golf? <laughs> yeah, and very smart I was and all. I used to wear two pairs of golfing trousers. Why did you wear two pairs of golfing trousers? Just in case I've got a hole in one. Mm. Get it?